Cut to us weekly episode two, episode two, season one. Today is Saturday, uh, May 9th, and it is another great day not to get infections. Uh, in addition to this program, the Cut to us Incorporated also sponsors a blog that is updated several times per week. Simply go to podcast.org to read the blog. There you can also donate to the organization. If you are willing and able to provide a donation, please consider doing so via podcast.org slash donate. Follow the instructions through PayPal. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, LGTB Bus uh, President Reggie Passion, Better Philippines, Humanist International. I apologize in advance, Richard, if you're watching, that we're going to be doing this in a much shorter version. <laughs> Evolutionary Humanist Berlin Brandenburg, the Secular Therapy Project, Recovering from Religion, Pro PH. Yes, I am reading these. Pre show, uh, uh, no, sorry, plus P L U S, pre show is something else I wrote down. Sue and Sean Hodgins of the Venus Project. And we have also Justin Minora, Minora, I'm sorry, Mino, Minoru Luna, who's the lead comrade over here at uh, Patas Inc. And we want to thank him for his efforts as well in the show. We'd also like to thank uh, Mike Kalida from the band Crib, who will be our guest performer today. Mike's about to be on in just a moment. Just hang in there, Mike. I'll pull you on in just a second. And today we also have Sir John Joe. From the band Mr. Bones, he will be our co-host today. So we'd like to thank both of them for being here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Mike. Mike, you are on. Yo, Benjamin. Yes. Hey. So unfortunately, Hi, good we're getting thank a video feed from Mike, so we're going to just have Mike perform. And Mike, you have the floor for the next few minutes, so feel free to sing and and dance all you like. Although you're not on cam, so we won't be able to watch you dancing. So. <laughs> but in the future, I might. Oh, great. Well, go ahead. It's all well, yours. Well, well, anyway, Benjamin, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank, thank you for having me here. Thank you, Patas, for having me here. And uh, uh, my name is Mike, and of course, uh, it's, uh, it's my extreme pleasure to play for your songs. And uh, I think I do this every weekdays, Monday to Friday. And uh, I'll, I'll just give you a little treat and uh, play for you something from the Beatles, okay? So here goes. Yesterday, all my troubles seemed so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Suddenly, I'm not half the man I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over me. Yesterday came suddenly. Why she had to go? I don't know. She wouldn't say. I said something wrong. Now I long for yesterday. Yesterday. The 
was such an easy game to play And now I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe in yesterday Why she had to go, I don't know, she wouldn't say I said something wrong, I long for yesterday, yesterday Love was such an easy game to play now I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe in yesterday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank we you. We really appreciate that. Uh, I'm very... It's whoops. a pleasure. Oh, sorry. Right, we really appreciate uh, having you on today. Uh, thank you so much. That was really great. Um, I wish we had a video feed, but maybe next time we can get you on, we can get a video. So I really Absolutely. appreciate you coming. I'm just trying to figure things out with uh, the app, so <laughs> it's, it's a little yeah. shady for me right now. Thank no, you. I understand. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, man. I appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and get on to the show. Thank you. Thank you again. And uh, John, you're on now. It's uh, off to the show. Uh, John Joe. May I call you John? I don't know if that's okay or not. I don't know what the rules are. John, are you still here? John Joe. John Joe is our co-host. He appears to have stepped away. All right. Well, we're going to move on until John gets back. I'm sure he'll be back in a moment. So um, we have a few callers lined up. Today is uh, viewer caller day. We've been answering uh, live audience questions as well. And it looks like John is actually appearing. Hey, John. Hey, Ben. What's up, Ben? <laughs> I don't know what the rules are, if I can just call you John Joe, or if you want to be called uh, John. Or... Oh, just call me John, or okay. whatever, whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it's want. No, no problem at all. Right, thank you. Uh, well, go ahead don't and introduce worry. yourself to the, uh, to the wonderful viewing audience. Uh, hi, guys. I'm John Joe of Mr. Bones to the Boneyard Circus. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy to be here, invited to... Give a little bit of my, I guess, opinion and humor if it's possible. And yeah, let's see how it goes, man. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Well, I love it, it. So... well, so am I. Don't worry. Um, every single episode is going to be the same. Just winging it. Uh, don't feel bad. Mm -hmm. And my hair is turning into a bird's nest. Uh, I'm hoping that the uh, clippers I bought will get here soon. But uh, this, this is what you guys have to live with for now. Um, so we yeah. <laughs> have. We have a few callers lined up, so it's up to you if you want to bring up a topic or talk about something, or if you want to jump straight into callers. Uh, we can get into um, that as well. Yeah, why don't we try a caller first? Let's figure it out, because you guys are going to okay. get to know me but with my answers, basically. Right. It, it might actually it's gonna work. It might give us a, a launching off point to, to get a caller on the line. Let's see if we got it. Yeah. Um, I'll go with Abraham... Lira, I think I'm saying that right. Abraham, you are on with Benjamin and Joe. How are you doing today? Hello. Abraham? Hey. Hello, Abraham. Hi. Your question is, what is atheism? You're a Catholic from Cagayan de Oro, which is, uh, I probably said that all wrong. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cagayan de Oro, yeah. I already um, suspected what? I did. But go ahead with your question, uh, uh, Abraham. I'll shut up. The question really is... How do, why, why do atheists believe in God? Having a bit of a hard time hearing you, Abram. Can you speak up a little bit? Yeah, it's a bit choppy. Uh, my, my question is, why, 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 why don't, why don't atheists believe in God? If I heard you correctly, you why said, don't, why don't atheists believe in God? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I, I will pass this one over to our co-host. So you first. Okay. Why don't atheists uh, believe why in God? Don't, well, okay. The position of atheism, it's not uh, seeing that there's no proof of the claimed God. It depends which God you're claiming. But atheists as, as a whole, for me, for example, it's all gods. That's why when I tell religion, 
well, don't, but I reject the idea of all gods. Um, I was raised Roman Catholic. And after about 20 years, that's when I converted to, I guess, well, not converted, went back to being an atheist because I was born an atheist. Then I was indoctrinated into the Roman Catholic faith. And through, yeah, 20 years of experience, I eventually became an atheist because of asking the right questions, I guess. And then 20 years later, I've been living as a godless person. So all my successes, all my uh, faults, everything like that has all been on me. There is no supernatural power guiding or influencing my life. I've been taking care of myself and my own life. And basically, that, that's for me, that's it. It's, it's really simple. It's not that I don't believe in God. It's that I don't see the proof. Okay. Uh, you, you don't, you don't, you don't see the proof or the existence of God. But what exactly is the proof that you are trying to look for but couldn't find? Oh, well, one thing that I would say is at some point already, I have stopped asking the questions because my position has been what it is already. That's why I've been like this for 20 years. Now, having to go back to figure out what made me decide? What was the nail in the coffin? Uh, I don't know. I really couldn't really backtrack right now on an instant, on a whim, and think 20 years back why I became this way. But I can tell you, I've been living 20 years God-free, and I have not needed it. I have not desired it. Uh, Proof of it is my existence and I guess yeah, yeah, my successes, my failures, everything is on my shoulders, everything is on my responsibility, and I have never had the need to to want it. There there was no need for that in my life, as far as I was concerned. And, um, my answer is slightly different than John's. Um mm -hmm. I'm I'm actually not convinced that there is a God. I do believe uh I do not believe a God exists. That doesn't mean I believe that no God exists. That's not to be confused. And uh, yeah, I, I, I want to clarify that uh, you either do believe or you do not believe. There is no middle ground between those two. You, you can't, you can't simultaneously um, believe and not believe. Those are two why, mutually so why, exclusive why positions. Don't, why don't you believe in? I haven't been presented with sufficient evidence. Sorry, I haven't been presented with sufficient evidence to believe. May I know what kind of evidence? You can that's, that's not my responsibility. That's the responsibility of the people who are making the claim. The claim, yeah. It's the claim. So, the so claim, are, you the claim. That, are you saying that atheism does not need any proof? Uh, that's the right. Atheism proof. is not a positive claim to no. knowledge. Atheism is the rejection yeah. of a positive claim to knowledge. Yes. Okay. In fact, I, in we don't words, make any claims. There are no in claims words, in atheism. In other words, you're saying that atheism the proof because if one cannot prove a negative, is that, is that it? No, that's that's not that's not how it goes. Um, uh, take this, Abraham. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, take this for example, Abraham. Um, I put myself in a position because I have friends who grew up in countries without religion. Uh, that was also one of the biggest influences in my life. And to be honest, I was very religious as a teenager. As a child and a teenager, I was raised very, very religious until I expanded my, my social uh, relationships with people from around the world, uh, people of other religions. And then it's more of the observation of trying to put one and one together and asking questions. So it didn't happen overnight. That's why, as I said earlier, it took 20 years for that to happen and then, now, then add another 20 years of living God-free. Okay, about the um, thing, about the thing that the, 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 the atheists do not have to prove that the burden that the that atheists do not have to prove God's existence and that the burden mm -hmm. proof, uh, yeah. for God's existence is on is on is on believers. Right. But mm -hmm. I, I, I'd like to ask questions. Okay? Can I ask questions? Sure. Well, I, I'd like to go back a step because um, I, I actually have a couple of comments on on the back of what he said. Because I I want to answer more directly your questions. So I you know 
I apologize, John. Yeah, yeah. I want to get more to the meat of this. So for me, it's um, atheism is not a negation. It's not. A, it's not a claim of the negative. A claim of the negative would be God does not exist. That's anti-theism or strong atheism. Weak atheism mm. is just the stance that I am not convinced that the theist position is true. Now, you asked specifically mm. what evidence would I be looking for. My answer is I don't know. And the reason for the I don't know is because I'm not arrogant enough to presume I could distinguish between something a god would do and something a sufficiently advanced alien technology would do. So the typical answer that I give and that I've heard from many, many others is I'm not sure what it would take to convince me that there is no god or that there is a god. But if there is a god and he's all-powerful and all-knowing, he absolutely should know what it would take to convince me and has not done so, which means either that god doesn't exist or doesn't want me to know he exists. Either way, it's not my problem. Mm -hmm. So, so go ahead with I'm your not, question. Are you not more of an agnostic that you cannot prove the existence of God? Uh, agnost no. Agnosticism has uh, a higher power. There's like it might not be the Abrahamic God or the Muslim I or Buddhist that. or whatever. It's you know. No, I don't, uh, I don't agree with that. So what's your stance on this, Ben? Uh, for me, agnosticism can apply to atheism or theism. Because agnosticism mm -hmm. is a claim of, I do not know. And so mm -hmm. that means I can be an atheist and not know there is no God. So I can be an agnostic atheist. Or I can be a theist and not know there is a God. So I can be an agnostic theist. So to me, it's not a position on its own. It's just a question of knowledge. And the, if the question mm -hmm. is, do you believe? My answer is no, which makes me an atheist. If the question is, do you know? My answer is also no, which makes me agnostic. Sounds about right. I agree with that. Hopefully that helps clear that up. Okay, Abraham, yeah, uh, yeah. continue. Because that, that's, that's just another label. That's, that's, that's all it is. It's a yeah. label, but it's not, yes. it's not the position. Yeah. Not, knowledge is a subset of belief. So you have uh, the, the belief, everything that you believe, and then some small portion of that is what you claim to know. I'm, I'm and not so, sure how this, oh, go ahead. I'm not sure how this program goes. I'm sure that there are other callers who are waiting on them on hold. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have other callers, but uh, I mean, we wanted to let oh, you finish your thought. This one the time. So, if the second caller comes in, that I'm off the, I'm out. Is that it? Or do I get to stay and ask questions? Also, you, I no, don't you know. Can, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you can, can continue. call again. Or you can ask again. It's no problem. Well, go if you have a question, go ahead and ask the question. So Tagalo, <laughs> This is this <laughs> is a show for having this is a show for having conversations. So we're happy to have you yeah. continue okay. the show, continue the conversation. So go ahead. So I I'd like, I'd like to take issue with the with the, with the claim that there is there atheists do not have to prove. Okay, you want to take issue that atheism doesn't have to prove? Is that what you said? No, it doesn't yeah. have to prove the, the, the non-existence of God, and that it is the burden of proof solely of a of, of theist to do so. Yeah, sure. Because uh, I, I, I'd, I'd like to ask two questions. Yeah, go ahead. Mm. The statement that this is the goal. Did you catch that, John? No, I didn't. What was that? Sorry. Can you can you say that again? Please. It's pure gold. That's isn't the that a cake gold. shop? Is it is it is it a positive claim or a negative claim? Uh, it's neither. It's atheism is neither a positive claim nor a negative claim. It wait, is the wait, rejection talking, of a positive claim. I'm not talking about atheism yet. I'm talking about the statement this is pure gold. <laughs> this is pure gold. That would be a positive claim to knowledge. Positive claim. How about how about the second statement? There are no additives to this gold. Is that a negative claim? I, uh, I would have to say that's probably a negative claim because you said there is no. A negative claim. Okay. It's a positive claim and a negative claim. Sorry, we, I think I'm we not lost hearing Sam anything. Ram. I think yeah. we lost them. But uh, what was he saying? Okay, so what I gathered is he said that there's pure gold, which is a positive, and yes. then there are no additives to gold, so that's right. the negative. What I'm saying uh, is to say oh, that the ahead. first He's claim, 
say that the first claim requires proof. Mm -hmm. The second claim, the second claim does not require proof. No, no, that's not what we're saying. Both no, of them would require so proof. Uh, Here, uh, let me give yeah. a, a, mere, a more clear example. Uh, if I say there is no such thing as fairies, I am making a negative claim, but it is a positive claim to knowledge. I am claiming to know that there is no such thing as a fairy. I'm going to go ahead and mute him for a moment because we're getting some barking in the background. Yeah, so, yeah the dog's really loud, uh, actually. <laughs> just, just hang on there, Abraham. We'll get you back in a second. So um, if I say there is no such thing as a fairy, that is a, quote, negative claim, but it is a positive claim to knowledge. I'm not saying that there is no God, though, if that's what you're getting at. So go ahead, mm. Abraham, you're back. What I'm, what I'm trying to, to, to get at is that say that uh, the first statement, this is pure gold, is not the same as the second statement, which is negative statement. There are no additives in this gold. They, they would to both require not, proof and evidence. Mm -hmm. To say that they are not set one and the same, Idea. Well, the, the thing about the gold thing is that pure gold can be tested, it can be verified, it can be compared to other pure gold. Now, if you're going to argue that uh, gold with additive, that's why it's negative, is presenting itself as gold, you can also test that. You can also double check on that. But what I'm really trying to say is that to say that the first state, statement requires proof, and to say that the second statement because it is a negative claim no. does not require proof no it, it does require proof it does require it, proof because it, it's yeah, a positive it, claim to knowledge it doesn't it, matter if it's a part negative part claim the fact that it's yeah, a negative claim doesn't mean it's not a positive claim to knowledge right, right. The, the positive claim requires proof right no hang on abraham you're not paying attention so yeah, yeah, no, i'm saying that we're going both statements thoughts. both statements this is pure gold and there are no adjectives to i'm not really sure exactly what you said but there are no such and such. Those are both positive claims to knowledge. You're, you're claiming to That's know right. something. So both of them would require evidence. That's mm -hmm. right. In other words, then, in other words, it's false to say uh, the burden of proof to prove the non existence of God. Uh, no, if somebody is claiming there is yeah. no God, they would have a burden of proof. Yeah. Which is why I don't say that. If somebody, if somebody claims, yeah, sure. If somebody says there is no God or there are no gods, they would have a burden of proof to demonstrate that. Okay. I'm not okay. claiming exactly. that. I'm exactly. not claiming yeah, that, yeah. and that's not the atheist position. Exactly. Okay. Why? Why this not? Is, this is one of the reasons why I don't get along with some atheists because they actually yeah. make that claim. That's so right. that's actually yeah that's oh, okay so I'm yeah saying, are you saying that one atheist can 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 think one way and other atheist can think another way and yeah, they're yes. both idiots because yeah, there's because, a difference uh, between strong oh. atheism and weak atheism mm. or you could say mm. atheism oh. and anti-theism so let me let me clarify this for you uh, Abraham so atheism on its own is just the position that I do not believe a God claim. If you go further than that, hmm. like, I do not believe there is any God, or I know there are no gods, if you go to that extent, that's anti-theism, which is consistent with atheism, but it is not atheism. Those are atheism. two distinct yeah. positions. It's like the extreme version of atheism, where sure, you're yeah, saying you that there that. is no God. So yeah. it's just like with uh, theists, you have the, the lighter ones, and then you have the hardcore theists that will act upon particular things. They'll either be violent, they'll be volatile, they'll be hostile. But you can't say that all theists are like that because you also have the nice ones. You get it? It's kind of, it's kind it's of like that, but this is more definitional. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Not all atheists are the same. That's no. one thing for sure. I can <laughs> tell you that. This, uh, <laughs> that's what makes it fun yeah. having co-hosts. How, how, yeah. how about you? Don't you have questions for, for me? Well, I, I kind of I want to make sure we answered your question first before we ask yeah. you something. But uh... oh, we, we, we agreed. We agreed. I mean, we basically okay. agreed on my question. <laughs> okay. So, uh, fine then. Um, what do you believe about a god, and why do you believe it? That's what we usually ask. Okay. Uh, well, one one question at a time, please. The first one is, 
what do you believe? And then why do you believe it? You can answer both at the same time, if you prefer. Okay, I believe in, in, in the God of the uh, uh, Christian God, Judeo Christian God. Uh, his name is uh, Ipsum Essence of Sisters. Okay. Uh, and I, I believe in him because what, one reason I believe in him is because I think it's more logical, more logical to believe in him than it is not to believe in him. Why? Uh, did you oh. hear me? Uh, Sorry, I said why? Why is it more logical? <laughs> I'm not sure if you are familiar with the... You can answer in Tagalog and uh, John can yeah, uh, I, I, translate. I, I can translate. Kung mas madali sa Tagalog, don't worry, man. That's why I'm here. If you're having a hard but time, you can translate there. <laughs> I'm not sure if you are familiar with the Aristotelian. If we're not familiar with the what? Aristotelian to mystic. I'm not sure what you're saying. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, it's choppy. I actually am having yeah. such a tough time. I'm leaning yeah, onto just, my computer hoping uh, I can hear better. Uh, uh, I think if you just speak up a little bit, it might help uh, mitigate yeah. the background noise. Aristotle. Greek philosopher. Oh, okay. Aristotle. Okay. I got you. Okay. Are you familiar with... I am very familiar with Aristotle. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the argument from contingency? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. If you are familiar with the uh, contingency argument, what is it about the argument that you don't believe in? I don't think that it's valid or sound to demonstrate the existence of a god. That's the simple answer. The longer answer would be a deconstruction of the argument itself. We can go through that if you like. But, uh, yes, I like Go ahead. I like that. Do you want to present the argument, or should I kind of give the short version? I'd like to know if... I'd like to know if... You know it. Yeah, we're right. losing Abraham here a lot, but uh, yeah. Um, so you're you're ask you're just asking us if we know about it, and you're gonna ask us a question about it when it was. <laughs> it's, it's like this. Uh huh. In many conversations with atheists, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I found out that most of them do not really understand, and yet they they agree to talk about it. And that, Mm -hmm. in confusion. All right, hang on, Abraham, because if you're going to talk about what most atheists do or don't understand, yeah. I don't really care because I'm not them. I, exactly. You're talking to me. So let's talk about what I do or don't understand, or what John does not understand. Yeah. I think I have to stop here. Uh, yeah. I'd like to. Yeah, uh, okay, to well, I, will, um, I will give a short answer, and then I'll let John tack on to it. But yeah. my, my answer to why don't I accept the contingency it, it, argument. It, it, it's all right. All right. Uh, uh, I'd like well, I'm going to answer the question whether you're here anyway. So uh, thank you for your call, mm -hmm. but I'm going to answer the question off if you're offline anyway. So the, okay. the question was, why don't I accept the contingency argument? The contingency argument is essentially the unmoved mover argument. I find mm -hmm. it to be insufficient. I find it to be an argument from personal incongruity. I can think of no yeah. other reason. I can think of no yeah. other reason as to why everything must be this way. Therefore, God, okay, I don't I'm find that yep. sufficient. Yep. Yep. I stop here. Okay. I'd, like, I'd like to let others come in. All right. Thank you for the call, Abraham. Uh, I, yeah, I wasn't oh, even I able to <laughs> ask my question. Yeah, I wasn't I, even able to ask my question. He wanted to run away, so I don't know. Anyway, I'm yeah. sorry. I don't want to beat him up. But go ahead, <laughs> Abraham. You, I mean, Abraham. John, you go ahead and give me your, uh, your thoughts on the contingency argument, if you have any. Yeah, the, the thing is... Um, it's the causality. It's the, 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 the first mover of the mover of the mover of the mover of the mover. It's so redundant already that it's, it's the thing that like, it has to start somewhere. And it doesn't have to be a particular entity. It can be um, 
a scenario or for example like the the singularity or the big bang you can always discuss this on and on and on and on and have a three hour six hour special with professionals for example like physicists scientists whatever mathematicians to count down the possibilities and the chances for that i think when you're asking people yeah. like if that's his artillery against uh, uh your average atheist your atheist who just simply doesn't have a position in in believing or not believing in god it just He's just an atheist. And then you drop that. It kind of makes Theus feel superior in a way. And I find that very disingenuous because it's kind of like me asking him or asking another person about something that happened 20 years ago in the music scene. Yeah. Like, oh, you weren't there. You don't know, man. I was there. I, I, I was this. I was, this. you know, it's, it's unfair to the person you're arguing or uh, having a conversation with because from the get-go of that particular, uh, that standpoint, that jump-off point where you're going at, you you yeah, you feel superior. You feel like you have uh, yeah. like the upper hand to begin with, rather than yeah, playing in a level uh, playing field. Atheist X said this, so or what are you, I'm going to saddle you with that information, and I don't I don't think that's yeah. an honest way to have a conversation. Yeah. Um, not yeah. that I'm saying he's being dishonest. I think it's just a defense mechanism. But uh, like I know mm. I don't want to beat up on Abraham too much now that he's gone, but. Uh, I, I think just my last comments on the contingency argument is that there's like this really long proof, like the Aristotelian proof and the Thomas Aquinas, this goes back many, many centuries. And then there's like the new ones from Ben Shapiro. Um, mm -hmm. But essentially it's the unmoved mover, the uncaused cause, the, you know, actualized actualizer, which was a debate happening on the Patas blog last week. And uh, yeah, and I, I, I have a I have a rejection of the very foundation of the argument. So before we even start building premises for there is an unmoved mover, I reject the very notion of there needing to be one in the first place. I think it's just an argument from yeah. ignorance. Yeah, um, and at the same time, if you're if you're looking for that sort of information, there are many uh, supporting documents and texts that you can find on your own. You don't have to ask a person. Like for example, in this very casual podcast Q and A. You know, I, I don't have any books on me. I, I have cigarettes. I have cigarettes, yeah. my microphone, and my laptop. Right. So, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to be going on a on a Google fucking expedition just to answer something that will probably bore our viewers at the same time. But yeah. if you do want to find out more about it, it's it helps it's accessible to, online. It helps that one of your co-hosts or your co-host here is uh, aware of these arguments. But um, you know, I yeah. I think the other problem I have with it is that the theists will get to there is an unmoved mover or there is an uncaused cause. It doesn't tell you anything mm -hmm. about what that cause is. So as soon as they yeah. jump from there is an uncaused cause and then try to say this cause is my God, they've, they've made so many assumptions all the way up to this that it just the whole thing collapses and I find no justification for it. Aristotle, because that was his argument originally, is mm -hmm. wrong. So <laughs> there you go. It's, it's, a claim, it's a claim stacking over another claim, over another claim, over another claim that will just bring the conversation on and on and on and on not not dissimilar to conspiracy theories but if we can bring that up yes, another time exactly so, <laughs> you can go really deep into the rabbit hole with that one. yeah you really can so we have a couple more colors um, i was wondering if you want me to bring one on i have uh, a couple different guys here uh, that we can bring on hell yeah Whoop. maybe you want to get a beer there. oh yeah you go for it really really quick okay all right, so I'm going to bring in our, our next caller here, uh, Arvin. Arvin, you are on with Benjamin and John. John is getting a beer right now, but what can I do for you, Arvin? Uh, good evening, Benjamin hey, and John. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, so it's my, it's my first time here. Thanks for coming. So what should I do? Should, should, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, too. So... Mm -hmm. uh, just... It says here that you called to. Uh, oh, John's back. So, John, we have uh, Arvin on the line. Uh, A -R -V -I -N, Hi, Arvin. Arvin. Good uh, evening. Yep. And it's, it says here that he wants to talk about God's existence, and he's a Catholic from Antipolo. So, go ahead and yeah. make your Hi, case. Arvin. What is it that you want to ask us or, or explain to us? Yeah. Okay, so regarding the God's existence. Um... I agree with you and with the discussion earlier that uh, uh, the burden of proof lies on the T side. So, okay with that. But uh, what I think atheists can do is to try to engage or uh, 
head face on the strongest proofs for the existence of God. Are you aware of All right, hang on. Edward Chaser? Um, what makes you think we haven't done that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was going to ask that, that too. But uh, I think you've done that. But I've also seen some uh, books and blog posts where uh, atheists commit straw man. Uh, the most typical mm -hmm. of them is if the universe has a fault, I, if everything has a cause, then what costs God? I think that's is a that's a straw man because I was that uh, a straw man because it essentially it's a hang on. Essentially, what you're getting at is that's a straw man because I'm gonna let you finish that thought. But just give me a second because I want to demonstrate why I don't think it's a straw man, and you tell me if you agree. Is that fair? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. I'm, I'm willing so to listen. the reason why I think it's not a straw man is because if God didn't have a cause then it's equally okay to say the universe didn't have a cause. To say otherwise is a special pleading fallacy. So I don't think it's a straw man to ask that question as a sort of hyperbole to the God doesn't have a cause. Because if God doesn't have a cause, then that's just an assertion. Neither does the universe need a cause. Why can't the universe just go on forever? Why do we need a God to, to fill in that hole of, of infinite regress? Anyway, hopefully that answered that simple question. That it's not a straw man, but uh, maybe you disagree. I understand that. I also encountered that kind of uh, objection, which uh, accuses of special pleading. But um, okay, you see, uh, I think you you don't know yet why why it's a straw man for it is. Uh, I I'm huh. expecting you you'll say something about it, but uh, you well, given go ahead. I'm I'm happy to have you explain why it's a straw man. Mm -hmm. I, okay, so okay, so it's a straw man because if we really try to look at the arguments of the theists like uh, uh, Plato, Aristotle, Plotinus, Aquinas, Anselm, Leibniz, and some other serious theists, there you won't find any premise that says everything has a cause. Uh, actually, they deny that everything has a cause because, of course, God doesn't have a cause, but how do we know that God doesn't have a cause? I, I, I'll agree. If there's no reason, it will just be a special thing. Why not the universe? But okay. Uh, if you will examine... Okay. I have to stop you, you just, just for a second because I, I think I understand where you're coming from now. So I think you're kind of on the right track. I don't know that it's a straw man per se, but I think you're on the right track. So there's two versions of the argument. There's a more modern one that Bill Craig uses all the time. And then there's the one from Aristotle's time, which was... Everything that exists has a cause, which, of course, if that's true, oh, then no. yes, everything that exists tell... has a cause. Or well, maybe it wasn't Aristotle, but you. there's, no, well, hang on. Um, the one that corrects that is everything that exists has a cause. Oh, but that means that God exists, so he must have had a cause. Well, can't have that. So everything that began to exist has a cause. That's Bill of Craig's version. So God didn't begin to exist, so he didn't have a cause, which is why you get the special pleading. But... I don't see that as a straw man still, but go ahead. Okay, so even I am I don't I'm not supporting the Kalam cosmological argument because uh, okay. we're not sure whether the world has a beginning. Actually, Aristotle said that the world right. is eternal; it's always there. So uh, it's neither the case that Aristotle said that everything has a cause. No, we can't quote anything. I've I don't remember if it was Aristotle's argument or not. It, it may or may not have been. Yeah. I, I think it was. It's a straw man from... from How is it a straw uh, man? A straw man... Hang on. Do you know what a David straw man Hume. is? Arvin. Yes. Uh, straw man is to attack a distortion. It's attacking not the position of the opponent, but something made up. Okay. And I don't think I it's made up because made I have up. heard Theus say it. I have heard Theus say that everything has a cause. Or everything begins to exist have a well, cause. How is it a strong? Yeah, that's why I. Okay, that's why I qualify the th serious theists, the ones who are really philosophers. Serious right? theists. Like, mm. like, yeah. If, even Craig will not say that. No. Yes, um, he will. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. That's his first premise. Yeah, but that's uh, also problematic because we, we don't see whether the but Big Bang is really the But that's the start. his first premise. That's literally his first premise. But, Whenever he brings up this argument, yeah, everything that begins why, to exist has a cause. That's why I agree that's his Kalam cosmological argument. I'm talking argument. way too much. I'm going to let John jump in. No, no, no. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I'm, I'm learning. I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm actually learning. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Arvin. I'm okay, sorry to so, interrupt. 
It's, it's okay. So, uh, I actually I'm more. Uh, I learned much from Dr. Edward Fraser. Do you know the guy? Uh, the He's name is familiar, but I'm not remembering exactly. Oh, so yeah, that's one thing I learned from him. That uh, uh, that's the most popular straw man. No, no, no. I no, I don't uh, see how. Okay, nothing. look, I, I I stop. I'm not going to sit here and let you just keep calling it a straw man. When I keep pointing out that theists everywhere, mm. whether or not they're serious or not, say everything that begins to exist has a cause. The question then is, why I doesn't God have a, a cause? Hang on a second. Then okay. the question is, why doesn't God have a cause? That's not a straw man question because the question is, or the, the premise is, everything that begins to exist has a cause. That is a direct question. And now if I said everything begins to exist has a cause and you say God didn't begin to exist so God doesn't need a cause, then that's fine. We can, we can move on. But there's still no straw man in asking the question. I agree that uh, to say or to quote, from William Lane Craig that uh, everything that has a beginning has a cause. It's not a straw man. What I'm saying that there's a straw man is when someone quotes from a supposed is that everything has a cause. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, um, I, I, okay. I, let let uh, John I can, comment. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I, I, think I, I, I can I, feel your uh, <laughs> agitation no. against the accusation of straw man. So uh, l- okay. let me make my case instead, all right? Well, let well hang on. Let uh, let John comment really quick because I've been talking over this whole time. So I want John to comment. Uh, it's before it's we all right. On. So here 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 we go. Uh, this is what I've observed from the conversation. You guys have been going around with the whole straw man thing and where to discuss it, but I think it falls down on the root of what atheism is. And atheism, okay, theist will say they know. Let's say the the mover of all movers, the beginning. The atheist can always say. Uh, humbly, like, I, I don't know. Science is still trying to find out. Humanity is still trying to discover these things. It's okay to say, I don't know. And I think that's the nice position of being an atheist is that you can admit if you don't know until further information is given to you. Now, if you say there's the, un- the source of everything, the beginning of everything, whether it's an entity, whether it's a superpower, if you make that claim or say it is, then that's the claim, Deva. Right? Atheists do not make any claims. They're, when I'm listening to your conversation, like Inga, the, the unknown mover, the, the beginning of all, I have never made that claim. I'm never going to say, no, God didn't do it. I said, it's like, we don't know. Let's find out. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, I agree. and my, response, um, my response to the question, not being a straw man, see, the thing is, a theist is going to say, oh, well, God didn't have a cause. And that's fine for them to say it, but it is just a bald assertion. How do they know God didn't have a cause? How do they de- justify that? It's just a, it's just an assertion. So it's okay. I'll share my thoughts how I think God doesn't have a cause. Go for it. Which doesn't appear that's, to a bald I was bald hoping we get to that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I'm so sorry. I uh, yeah, just right went here. to oh. a wrong track. I should have I went to... Uh, anyway, let's, let's go. Mm. So... Uh, do you agree that uh, this kind of proof will work for God's existence? Because I no. I am aware that uh, that atheists are uh, are looking for direct uh, observable evidence. But uh, as you can see, there's nothing like that from the theists because they can oh look here's God. They can mm. they can do that from reason alone. Um, yeah, I, I don't well, I don't know if but I don't know if John I don't know if John would agree with this, but. My statement is going to be a logical argument has two properties. It has to be true premises lead to true conclusions if the premises are sound. So that means Mm -hmm. that uh, you need to demonstrate that the logical structure is both valid and sound. That means you can't have an invalid structure and sound premises that doesn't get you to a true conclusion. If you have a valid structure and unsound premises, then you don't have a true conclusion either. Well, you might have, but you don't know. And so that's very good. yeah, so the argument would be, or your question was, will this argument work? And I don't think any argument on its own would work until you demonstrate the truth of a premise. So oh, that's all, good. That's good. all because, men from Italy are yeah. green, Bill is from Italy, mm-hmm. so therefore Bill is green. That is a logically yeah. valid structure, but in yeah, fact, all people from Italy are not green. Yes, mm. the, the 
one of the premises is false. Yeah, I agree. I know that that uh, okay. for an argument to be correct, I, I just wanted to clarify that for you and for the audience. So go ahead with your proof. Well, uh, you answered my question. Uh, okay. Very well, because right. uh, I, 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 I'm just testing whether you will accept some argument or you just want to use your senses that point me. Uh, no, point I will me to clarify that I'm. Him. Yes, I will clarify that I'm happy to hear an argument because I think that educates others on arguments maybe they haven't heard yet. So mm. I mean, I, I'm probably aware of every contemporary argument for the existence of God because I've studied yeah. all of them, but most people probably aren't, okay. so I'm happy to go over it. Yeah, because some atheists, especially Filipino atheists, they don't want argument. They just want, show me God, something like that. And yeah. it's the end of conversation. Yeah, and I reject that don't too. Don't have the chance to show mm -hmm. the argument. Uh, very good. You're very, you're a very good one. <laughs> you're very good. <laughs> you're a very good one, Ben. You're a very good that's, atheist. That's what they pay me for. Oh wait, they don't pay me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let let me now try to share what what I think the the best argument for God's existence. Go well, nuts. it's again from Aristotle. It's argument from motion or motion. The term is in general is change. No. So uh, the starting point can be something very evident like water, wood. So with those things, we can see that they change. For example, uh, a water is lukewarm, it can be came hot, or a wood is, is just a wood. Then when you set it on fire, it will be a burning wood. So in Aristotle's analysis of change, change is the actualization of potentiality. So uh, a wood has the potential to be a burning wood. So if it is a potentially burning wood, it's not yet actually burning wood. But when you get an actual fire, which is actually hot, and you, you put it on the wood, the, poten the potential of the wood to be burning will be actualized. So I think that's the starting point of Aristotle. There are evident things like water, wood, and those are changing things. And change is not, Contra to Parmenides, it's not going from nothing to something. That's why Parmenides argued that uh, change is illusory. There's no change. But uh, of course, that's self defeating because uh, while you are doing some argument, you are already in change. You are going from premise to conclusion, something like that. So what we can say with those first premises uh, are there are changing things and change is actualization of uh, potential and change is real. And another thing we can add, uh, this is very important. It's, a, it's now about the cause. <clears throat> uh, nothing potential can be actual by itself. Okay, so like the, let's go back with the Can, uh, can I stop you for just a second? I, okay, okay, sure. I, I, I don't want to bore the audience with these logical proofs that are probably making their eyes glaze over. So I, I just want to know, if, can we <laughs> get to the point a little faster? That's all. Yeah. Okay, I will, I will make sure. It's faster, but uh, see, okay, I will finish it. Uh, try, try to so, give me the, the uh, Cliff Notes version, the, the short one. Yeah. And then we can, if you need to expand on it later, we can, but just shorter version will be better. Okay, okay. So uh, the next premise is that uh, nothing can be, no, no potential can be actual without having another actual thing. Uh, to, to prove that very fast, uh, I have a potential to learn French language. I cannot be both potentially learned in French language or actually learned and actually learned in French language. It must be only one. But I can only learn from someone who is actually learned, learned of uh, French language. So that's, that's how you prove the principle of causality. So everything that has a potential uh, can be influenced by a cause to actualize the effect. So... Uh, we can now go to the structure of every material things. Ev do you know that every material yep. things is also in potentiality? Uh, what, how do I what say is, so? Because the what is the punchline? Because I'm, I'm still, like I feel yeah, like I'm waiting I'm, for this to get to. A I, I I agree. I agree with Arvin that there's right. nothing more constant in the universe than change. That's sure. that's undeniable. Change is 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 definite. That's, that's the matter only thing and that's motion. Constant. That's time and yeah. space. So I'm still trying to figure out the point. Yeah, where are we getting okay, to? So, uh, What's the continue? conclusion of the argument? Maybe so, we can start there and work our way backwards. <clears throat> well, God exists. <laughs> oh, God, well, no, monotheistic maybe, God exists. Maybe back up a little further then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm already halfway, so... 
Okay, go ahead. Let's let's continue. So that will, will be done. Okay, so um, so every material things are composed of prime matter and substantial form. For example, a dog it has a body, but its body by itself is in potential because it can be a body of a tree, a body. Uh, get, some get kind of point. minerals you don't in have to, the ground. You don't have to give hundreds of examples. Let's get to the point. Yeah. Okay, okay. Anyways, just to prove it. Uh, we get it. So, Potentiality, actualization. Okay. Continue. But, so, th there's a prime matter in material things, but what makes them actually a dog is there's a su substantial form of dogness. No? So, it's what's, what, what, what's true with the dog is true on. with every... Mm -hmm. What makes it actually a dog are the physical facts about the universe. A dog is a dog and is not not a dog. We label that particular set of collection of atoms a dog. Okay, this is, this is yes, a, a dogs have atom, but uh, you can say that atoms are all that there is because mm, we cannot, if, no. if atoms are all that there is, then well, how can we know not all that there is. where this atom, where this atom belongs? So we point to the dog. So the whole dog also exists, not only its atom. So that's the um, substantial form, the pattern. But, John, but they what? share, so, they share atoms with other stuff. Other things that are are whether alive yeah. or not not physically alive and all that, they share characteristics. They share, uh, as you said, atoms. I would even say, you know, genetics and shit like that. But it, it, that's that's like for me, it's general knowledge. We're arguing over something that's. I'm still trying to see the point. I'm really trying to okay, find the point. Okay, so with the dog, yeah, yeah. I'll continue. I'll continue. Before, so, no, before okay. before you continue, before you continue, I want to clarify: atoms okay. are not the only thing. I mean, you could you could argue that atoms are the only existent thing that we know of, besides perhaps dark matter. But ignoring mm -hmm. that for the moment, um, atoms also have certain properties. So there are energies, forces that we call them. We had the four fundamental forces, weak nuclear, strong nuclear, gravity, and one other one that's escaping my memory, which nobody talks about anyway. Um, and so, <laughs> gravitation, I mentioned that one, I think. But there's, there's another one. I'm, yeah, I'm not a did. physicist, so don't worry about it. Okay. I, it doesn't matter. The point is, atoms, while they are, quote-unquote, the only thing, are not the only potentially acting thing. There are other things like the four fundamental forces of the universe that cause atoms to interact in a certain way. So the reason a dog is a dog is because the specific properties of the universe cause those set of atoms to stay together until that particular organism no longer is able to continue staying together because of perhaps a mm. lack of energy. It dies, you know, that kind of thing. Something else has to act upon yeah. that thing. Yeah. Even yeah. when it's a rotting corpse, it still shares a bit of the atoms of... It's not a yeah. dog anymore, it's a corpse. Yes. Or a corpse of yeah, so, so I <laughs> agree with that. I agree with that. So even atom itself or particles, which not a dog, has is composed of prime matter and substantial Magnetic, form. Because right. we can see many particles, but uh, we can tell that they're the same particles because they have the same form, pattern, or substantial form. But they are different particles because they are in different points of space. That's their prime matter. So although prime matter by itself is a potentiality, no, it, it must be merged with substantial form in order to exist. How do you define uh, substantial prime form matter? On the... Prime matter is the substratum of any material object. What does that it's mean? The one that, uh, mm. it, it, it's you, the one you, that you, uh, gives you... Do you own... mean... Mm -hmm. I want to just clarify. Maybe I understand it already, and I just don't want to make you go on a tangent. So do you mean that, for example, my prime matter would be like hydrogen, oxygen, you know, nitrogen... Yeah, all of those. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I get it. So, if we're a carbon-based planet, carbon-based uh, creatures, animals, people, so if we find or discover, for example, uh, living organisms in another universe that are made more of, they're not carbon-based, they're nitrogen-based or something like that, it kind of defeats the argument of the structure because their structure is completely different from ours. Is that not true? I, I don't know if I understand the argument well enough at this point to comment on whether or not it's true. Mm. Maybe Arvin can. I mean, I, I understand what he's getting at, but I don't understand why he's yeah. getting there. So it's continue. The structure and the, the, parts, the parts of the structure that are similar or unique to this particular place or this world. Yeah, we're a carbon-based species, carbon-based life right. forms in this planet. 
it doesn't have necessarily have to be carbon based anywhere else. So that's generalizing again that everything I, has I a guess, structure that's organized. I guess how do we get to the god? Because I feel like we're just sort of <laughs> dancing around all kinds of other stuff, yeah. but I'm not sure where the god plays into this. So let's get to that, and then we'll try to wrap this up. We have other callers. Arvin? Arvin, did we lose you? Oh, we lost. I think we lost Arvin. Yep, we lost Arvin. Oh, hold on. He's, he's, he he didn't like that I brought up aliens. Oh, there he is. I think, I think, I think yeah, we lost hello, Arvin. Hello, hello. There we go. Uh, hey. Yeah, I, 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 I'm talking and talking, but I realized no one is responding. So. Yeah, we didn't hear you. <laughs> we, I guess you, your mic cut out. So what? how do we get to the god? Okay, to continue. Uh, Please. Prime matter is very important because a uh, change, especially substantial form. Okay. Uh, when someone dies, for example, a man or an animal, uh, it gives away its old form. It's not animal anymore or man. It, beca it becomes minerals. You so are, you are playing remains, with... No. The remains are the same. No, you are playing with labels. This is, this is well, playing with labels. Okay, I will challenge you then. The, Can you explain substantial change without appealing to prime matter and substantial form? Because if the prime matter didn't change. The, the structure changed, and our label for that structure changed. But every material thinks are both prime matter and the structure or the substantial form. No, the only objection because, I had so far, I was going to let you continue, but the only objection I had that you, to what you said was... Um, it's no longer a dog. And the only reason it's no longer a dog is because we don't label it a dog anymore. It's not because it suddenly magically turned into something else. It just stopped being what we call it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It has nothing to but do with why, actuality. Why do we stop calling it as a dog? Because but that's what we, we label it. Because it if, it when it's yeah. no longer alive, it's not valuable to call it a living dog anymore. We call it a dead dog. Can we say that the structure of its body changes? That's why it's not a yes. dog anymore. Well, so the energy well, in just, the dog changes. It, it'll be it'll it'll be deconstructed from what it was. It's gonna change into something else. It's gonna yeah. die. It's gonna become a corpse, and then it's gonna rot, and then it's gonna become worm food, and then it's gonna be in the soil. It's gonna be become fertilizer, and then that fertilizer through erosion, will turn into something else and either become a tree, become a plant, become anything. You're just and changing the name of it. Exactly. And yeah, to clarify, I agree with that. But... Well, I want to clarify the way that that happens is not through some mystical force causing it to happen. It happens through a change in energy states. So mm -hmm. what happens when a dog dies is that its energy is no longer being produced by the brain. So the brain shuts down and then the organs start to shut down. And the only reason the organs can stay alive is because the brain was keeping it alive, because it thought it was able to eat. And when it can't eat, it can't take in more energy. When it can't take in more energy, it stops existing and starts to decompose. It, the energy starts to break down. The connections between the cells start to break down. The cells start to die. Yeah, well, I agree with that, because that is the actualization okay. of the potentiality of the dog to become some other things. Okay, go so, on. So, well, anyway... Okay, so that's prime, that is prime matter. Yeah, that's the prime matter and substantial form, which are both potentiality. So if if there will be really existing dog and uh, any other material things which are composed of potentialities like prime matter and substantial form, it should be actualized by something else, another actual thing. So we're getting abstract here, but but uh, let's. Let's remember, I didn't start it from a thin air. I started with water, wood, or a dog. Something uh, we like remember. That. Go on. So, it, mm -hmm. so, okay. So, if this is a potentiality, it requires some other actual thing to, to actualize is existed here and now, continuously. So, this is the argument. Either that actual thing is a purely actual actualizer, or... It's another actual thing that is composed of both potentiality and actuality, which is, again, actualized by another actual thing, which, again, will be actualized by another thing, and so on, ad infinitum, or that's the infinite regress. So that's two, that's the two, two choices. Either there is infinite regress or there's purely actual actualizer, the one that doesn't have any potentiality, okay? 
So no, 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 no. I, I will. I, I, oh. No, no, no. Either there is an actualized actualizer or there is not. Either there is an infinite regress or there is not. If you're going to, I mean, I, I agree that those might be the only two possibilities. But my point okay. is that if, if you're going to set up a dichotomy, they better damn well be a direct, not logical negation, or else I'm going to disagree. Because there may be some okay, other okay. option we're Either not aware of. Is... But my, okay, my, question, yeah. okay. my question with regard to whether there's an infinite regress or not, how do we determine which of those mm -hmm. it is? Okay, so here, here is it. Infinite regress is impossible. So how? why? Why? Uh, yeah, how? How and why? Um, please take note that this is an example of a hierarchical series or uh, essential, essentially ordered causal series. It's not accidentally ordered causal series. Let me give, give two examples. Uh, you are the son of your father and your father is the son of your grandfather. But you can make a son of your own without your grandfather. That's an example of accidentally uh, causal or accidentally ordered causal series. But how about the essentially ordered causal series? And a basic example of that is a stone being moved by a stick and the stick being moved by a hand. How is this so, demonstrating an infinite uh, regress is impossible? Because that's a bald assertion you're making. Yeah. Uh, I'm not yet done. So. Nah. The, I, the second well, you're giving case, me, the... hang on, you're giving me examples, and I don't care about examples, I care about evidence that would demonstrate that it's impossible, because yeah. you said it's impossible. I okay. would agree that it might be improbable, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. How do you get to that? Yeah, it's impossible because if we agree beforehand that anything that is in potentiality must be actualized by another actual thing, then if everything is made up of potentiality, Nothing will really exist. There so, should be a first member. Why would nothing a purely exist? Actual. Because why would nothing exist? How can you have actual existence without without the potential to existence? Be well, that's an argument for personal incredulity fallacy. That you're basically saying, how can this be? I can think of no way that it can be, so I'm going to reject it. Mm. That's it's a fallacy. It's not like that. It's not. Yeah, it's based exactly from like my that. Thoughts. It's it's based from the earlier premise that. But, no, it's uh, not. Every potential. It's not based on the earlier uh, premise because the earlier you premise. Me? Can the you... earlier premise. Okay. Yes, the earlier premise didn't get you to that. You said you you said specifically, how can this be? That's a great question, but then how can this be? Therefore, there this is impossible. Is an assertion, of it's a positive Wait, claim to knowledge, and it's a personal my... incredulity fallacy. You're I'm not paraphrasing. quoting the premises I'm talking about. I'm talking about the... the principle of causality. Yeah, that every potential can only be actualized by another actual thing. I you, can you, we you back up? Yeah, that's because you said. Anyways, hey, you said that if there was an infinite regress, there would be nothing. I'm not sure how you got there because you said, "How else mm -hmm. can it be?" Which is an argument from ignorance for argument for personal incredulity. Okay, let me rephrase it. So okay. if everything is composed of potentiality and actuality, then nothing will exist because this, this thing has a potential to exist, is actualized by another thing, which is, also a, uh, which, which is also a composite of actuality and potentiality. And so it needs another cause to continue existing and so, and so on and so forth. And it's, that's why, uh, uh, let me continue the example. It's like the, the stone moving by a stick with a hand. Even if we have <laughs> infinite number of sticks, the stone will not move by those infinite number of sticks. Uh, why? Because in that case, the first mover is the hand. Hang on, Arvin. Remove the... No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Arvin, uh, a stone I'm can move John without answer. a stick. Yeah, a stone can move without a stick. Well, and a stick can move without a hand. I think I get where he's coming from, though, because yeah. he's... He's saying that there must be something that caused it to move. I, I yeah. think that's just the general. But I agree with you that a stone can definitely move without a stick. It, it could just move based on gravitational forces. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's, it's, it's not a really good example. It's kind of like uh, the Fibonacci pattern. It will happen regardless of because that's the pattern of the yeah. life form's existence, how it's born into it. You know, what are you going to call the, the Fibonacci? You're going to say that's the creator? It's the pattern. It's the flow. Like when you said earlier, when wood, when you have wood and then you burn it, 
Okay, that needs uh, something to light it up. That needs um, what you call this, uh, basically a flame. How does the flame come into to play? And then before it turns into charcoal, which will later become something else, you know, it's, I, I, I don't know. I don't see that there has to be something to make it happen. Forest fires happen without anyone lighting a fire in the forest. There's so many, so many ways things can happen. And to simplify it in a way that there has to be something to poke or to move, or it, it happens. As we and, agreed earlier, change is constant. Yeah. And how that change manifests itself is the, the uh, possibilities are limitless. So to be able to, to say that, oh, it's this, it's this one thing that starts it off, like fire starts uh, a spark will start the fire. That's not necessarily true. Yeah, and I want to clarify, because I agree with John for the most part. I think the part where John is kind of missing a little bit, I don't think he's doing it on purpose. I think he's, uh, he's missing the fact that there's going to be an infinite regress of causes. So let's say hypothetically, mm. I agree that there cannot be an infinite regress, that that is impossible. What caused it then? What started it all? Okay. And how do you know? What started? Well, that's not my argument. So there must be some first must, cause. Must... That's what you're getting at. Yeah. There must be some okay, first so, purely okay. actualized the first cause. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. Okay. The holder so, of the stick. Can I continue now? Something like that. So do you agree that there's no infinite regress? There should be a purely actual. I'm agreeing for the sake of some... argument. I don't think you've demonstrated that, but I'm happy to move on for the sake of argument. Okay. So. Let's call it the purely actual actualizer. Uh, it doesn't have any potentiality because it's purely actual. And therefore, it doesn't need any cost because you can only uh, make an effect to something that has a potential, okay? Like the prime matter or the substantial form, etc. Yes, so, what but is now, it? The, next, the, the, the next step of the proof is that is the purely actual actualizer many? So the short answer for that is no because... To be many, you, you should have some potentiality like prime matter. We know that dogs are many even though they are similar dogs because they have different flesh and bones. Those are the prime matter and prime matter is potentiality. But the purely actual actualizer doesn't have a potentiality. Therefore, the purely actual actualizer must be necessarily one. So what else can you say? The purely actual actualizer must be eternal or immutable, changeless because time is the rate of change and Purely actual actualizer doesn't have any potentiality. It cannot change, so it's time. If it cannot change, how can it do anything? It's immutable. Mm. If it if it doesn't change again, if it pardon, can't change, if it can't change, how can it do anything? You need to well, be able to change to do yeah. stuff. I need to be able to move my arm to pick up my cup and drink water. Oh, I, how does a purely actualizer do the, anything uh, if it can't change? I know the answer to that. Uh, changing something doesn't require you to change. It's just yes, accidental it to human beings. Yes, In order for me to change it's... something else, I need to change. If well, I'm static, I'm of... not able to act on anything. It... Well, the, the definition of causing an effect is just actualizing a potentiality. There's I feel nothing like you just ignore what I just said cost. to move on. Yeah. I, you just ignore what I said to move on. So... Let me go back. I, I can I can face no, it, but uh, no. okay, okay. Hang so on. go on, go on. I'm gonna say it again and uh -huh. you can reply. <laughs> okay. How can something that cannot change cause something else to change? Well if it is a purely actual actualizer, that doesn't it answer the question change. either. That the change will only that change will only happen to the effect. It's like the Cambridge I, I forgot the term. For example, uh, Socrates became shorter but it's not because Socrates really became shorter than Plato it's that Plato become uh, taller than Socrates so so that's uh, an example of Cambridge change so yeah you're that, not that's, you're not answering that's my what question we can apply. You're, that's you're what just... we can apply to God no you can't because if God no. can't do anything then he can't cause anything if God is not it's changeless He's... Change is necessary to cause other things. For example, I will just go back to your rock. Let's say the only way that rock is going to be able to fall down that hill, absent gravity, uh, is a stick. If I'm unable to poke it with a stick because I can't change, 
because me poking it with a stick requires change, then that rock can't go anywhere. But you moving it... You've locked uh, yourself in a uh, hole there. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the hand is moved by the wheel, right? And the wheel is moved by knowledge. And knowledge is it's so and so forth. That's right. that's why we can only end okay. it with the purely actual actualizer. The but example you're, is just you're not a small answering my example question. of question. You yeah. said you're avoiding all the questions. You What's said, the question? Uh, really? What's the question? So for the third or fourth time now, you yeah. said it's changeless. I'm sorry. You said it cannot change. Yes, yes, yes. How can something that cannot change do anything? And this is weird because we agreed earlier that there's one constant in the universe, and that is change. You yep. agree that change happens. That's why I'm confused. Uh, well, there's a difference between saying that change happens and change everything changes. Well, I didn't claim that everything changes. Actually, prime matter by mm -hmm. itself doesn't change. It changes when it is merged to a substantial form. That's why the remain of the dog is the same remain that became the mirror neurons that, that will become the plants, etc. If you're not going to answer the question, I'm just going to move on. Okay. This, this is just a waste Thanks. of time. Because I mean, the question okay, is very okay. simple. If you're not going to answer it, we can move on. But the question is, if something is changeless unable to change how can it do anything anything at all including how can cause it influence other things? any change yes mm. change requires the ability for something perfect, else to change if someone is already perfect nothing can be uh, added uh, there on. we go then there we go yeah. got an answer but anyway so that's, that's, talking... not a good that's answer, the claim that's answer. that's the claim that something is perfect that's a claim well that something well, perfect we, we, exists we, we, Purely actual is also perfectly uh, good because to, to be imperfect good. is to have some is to is to have some unactualized potentiality. For example, a man has the potential to be reasonable, but if he, he if he chooses not to be reasonable, he's not a good man. So oh, now uh, that's if, also but, that's also a matter of perspective. What might not be reasonable reasonable to you might be reasonable to him or to others. It's just, but in your you, case, you might not think it's reasonable. Some people think it's reasonable to kill. Some, most people don't. Some people think it's reasonable to, to be eating vegetables more than meat. Some people I also, don't. I also don't see how that's a demonstration of perfection because that's two separate things. We're talking about morality versus just in general perfection. I don't, I don't even know what perfection would be. It's not clearly defined. Yes. But, yeah, I mean, you're, you're correct. Because perfection okay. is related to nature. For example, a perfect eye is the eye that see. Because the, the nature or perfection of eye is to see. So you must know the nature of things. No, that's, okay, a purpose. But that's, the, that's, that's the purpose of the eye. If it's able to see, it does not mean it's perfect. Because some people see in 2020 vision, some don't. Yeah. And uh, what yeah. if somebody has have uh, different, Some people have 10 20 vision. I do with my glasses mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Uh, what, what is perfect but, vision? But, would perfect vision include okay. the ability to see the entire radio spectrum from uh, radio waves yeah, to yeah. ultraviolet? Oh, yeah, would. yeah, okay. yeah. It's it's in degrees, but uh, you can see that it's better to have uh, an eye that can see instead of an eye that can see because we know. In other words, that the in other words, the nature I don't need of the a, eye. In is other to words, see. in other words, I don't need a perfect eye to be able to see. I just need an eye that works at all. But how can we know that something is wow. more or less perfect when there's something is not perfect? Anyways, we're going away with the yeah. Idea. Because so when you brought when you brought when you brought up perfection, oh. that's why if something is perfect that doesn't need to change, that is able to move things I mean, without changing itself. John and I are literally both wearing glasses, demonstrating that we yeah. don't need perfect <laughs> eyes to see. Yeah, your eyes is still good because you can still see. Compare with the I ones can, who don't see but anymore. But it's not a per. You said it would need a perfect eye. We don't need a perfect eye to see. But we. But if I don't we even know what a perfect eye would be. If we abstracted the the idea of seeing, that's perfection already. How is that perfection? In because I can think. I can think of a better eye than mine. Uh, squids have better eyes than humans do, for the most part. They can see. They just can see better. It's just an objective fact. 
Um, and I don't see how this is getting you near a perfect eye, and I don't see why you need a perfect eye to see. Well, the simple explanation for this is that you, we need to distinguish between the idea or the form and the matter which is composed of prime matter and substantial form, which limits the, the substantial form. That's why uh, an eye can be more or less good, but it's still uh, intelligible so it's not perfect. And, underst and un understandable. So are you that, not uh, finding... A good, yeah. uh, so a, it's, a good, not, it's uh, not perfect. A good eye. A good eye is not perfect. A good. Yes. A good eye is as is an eye that see because that's the nature of eye. So let's go back to the purely actual so, actualizer. Hang on. So, oh, hang on. Hang on. Uh -huh. I just want to clarify. Are you defining perfect as the ability to see at all? Well, no, because perfection you must relate it to something what you're talking about. Perfect in what? Exactly. Right? Because you can you can have a you can have a blind person. Okay, take this example. You can have a blind person, but the structure of the eye, the iris and everything, when you take a photo of that person's eye, it can actually be symmetrical and perfect. And then you can call it the perfect eye. But it the purpose, its usefulness is thrown out the window. It's an objective thought. Aesthetically, in a photo, in an image, it's beautiful, it's almost perfect. But for practical use, it's useless. It's not perfect. Yes, because the latter case where you are talking about just the appearance of the eye is just the partial aspect of reality of the eye. But the whole reality of the eye includes its nature, its function. Anyways, so okay. an eye can get... Can Sorry, I'm not laughing bad, at you. I'm right? just confused. So, Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we're, okay, okay. It's okay. I'm still trying to see where, so, where we're going, where we're going yeah. at with this. Because uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we were talking so, about change. I've, I've just shown... We've been at this for like I, 30 minutes that, now. Yeah, purely actual actualizer doesn't change. Eternal. It's also immaterial or incorporeal because to have some body is to have some potential because a body can ha can be a body of uh, some kind of body or some other else. So, but purely actual actualizer doesn't have a potentiality. So, it's it's incorporeal. It's perfectly good too because it doesn't have a potential that can fail to act to be actualized. How are you so defining it's good? Perfectly good. It's purely actual. How are you defining good? good? Is, okay, yeah. let me define good. Good Go is it. something, is perfection. It's something that everything desires. No. So everything because tends perfection, to perfection. Perfection is, as, as we were talking about, in the eye of the beholder. What's perfection for you, it's not going to be perfection for me. It's not going to yeah. be perfection for Ben. It's not going to be perfection for our audience. I, I don't even think perfection is possible. Yeah. I think it's just an abstract concept, just like infinity is an abstract con but concept. It's, 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 ro it's romanticizing the idea of something ideal. It's romanticizing something, as we say, perfect, something that sure. fits our is the right thing. Hello? Okay, I, so I, I, I understand your point, but uh, let me give some more example. For example, the, well, the triangularity. You know, you don't need to do that. You okay. can go on to the rest yeah. of the argument we, because I, I, I just wanted to clarify that you weren't saying good in the sense of moral good because that's not demonstrated by well, the previous I, premises. I can talk briefly between moral and physical good. No, so you really an can't. example of physical good. Because you can't because okay, the so. previous premises don't get you there. Okay, you can't get so to yeah, a morally it's, good it's, Besides, it's, Well, I'm not uh, going to that. Okay, I'm then just, continue. That's why I was asking. Trying to answer, yeah, I'm just trying to answer uh, your question, what is good? So Fantastic. Well, we'll ignore that so I can continue. Yes, that was um, all I wanted to know. Go on. So, so we can see that whatever actualizes other potential is a kind of power, just like a fire makes a wood burning. So, but Okay, you have actual... one minute to finish the argument, please. Okay, one minute. So it's omnipotent, the purely actual. It's also omniscient and has knowledge, so we can call it he, um, because because yeah. the e effects must somehow yeah, no, exist. I'm sorry, I don't know how cost. you're getting to any of that because that, none of that follows from the previous premises. You don't need all knowledge well, to be able to be I, the first cause of something. No, can, no, can I, I request I you to let I me? I don't. No, I can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can we've hang been up going on. Okay, if, My, if you don't to... want. 
Because, no, I, if, because can instead I of letting me finish the full reason? argument. Uh, Stop. Listen, are you listening? Yeah. Okay. I don't need to know everything about the rock in order to push it off the hill. I don't need to have all knowledge do something. So this idea that there needs to be a being with all knowledge is not followed from your premises. But I'm not yet done in proving that. I don't care the, if you're done. You just, uh, you just asserted um, our, it has to be all knowing. Go ahead, John. But how can you check my argument if you're not letting me finish? Because Arvin, you asserted Arvin. it must be all knowing and then moved on. You didn't yeah. demonstrate. But I'm giving the reason. Yes, Arvin. Um, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna. Ex I'm gonna explain it to you in a way na kahit magtagalog tayo. We gave you the opportunity okay. to explain, de ba? Na, nabigyan ka ng oras para mag-explain. Yun ang nangyari, naging boy-liboy na tayo. We've gone to so many parts where we were asking diba, specific ones and we've gone around. We've agreed to some point. We've disagreed in a bunch of points. And both Ben and I are still waiting for... We, uh, no, that's, almost, that's almost done, though. When I say that's omniscient... All right, yes. finish. And, and finish. Our, and our, I'm not and scared, Bridgekeeper. Go ahead. Continue. The one minute has been given. Anyways, the conclusion is that if the purely actualizer is one, Wait. immaterial, eternal, om omnipotent, omniscient, perfectly no. good, and that no. sounds good, no. and purely actual no. actualizer no. exists, so no. God exists. No. So I'm no. done with no. the no. 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 argument. No. I asked you how you know it's omniscient, and you said, I'm trying to explain that, and then you said, if it's omniscient. How did you demonstrate you it's omniscient? Will, will you not? Will you not cut me again? Just like you. Well, you didn't answer earlier. my question. I habitually stop. Stop. Listen, please. I'm trying to be patient with you. I promise. <laughs> I am telling you that I asked you how you know it's omniscient, and then I said that you don't need to be omniscient to do something. I don't need to know everything about the rock to be able to push it off the hill. I don't need to know everything about but the stick to push it towards the rock. Let me finish, please. So. I don't need to know everything about the rock to cause the rock to move. I don't need to know everything about gravity to understand how to drop a ball. Okay? So the point is... I agree, I agree you, with those. When I ask, okay? Because you're so, when I, so when I asked you how you get to this must be omniscient, you concluded the argument with it must be omnipotent and omniscient, and then we call this God. You didn't demonstrate how you know it must be omniscient. You just asserted it and moved on, and then you expect me to listen to well, you, you further. you say... You say I'm done with the one minute, so I've taken the shortcut. Okay. How was it omniscient, and how do you know? <laughs> okay, so the reasoning is this. Uh, effect, the effect must somehow exist in the cause, right? No. So, for example, uh, so why, the effect can why be greater than the stop. cause. You're not answering my question. Why is it necessary to know everything about what you're causing in order to cause it. I don't see how you get there. Well, maybe, maybe you can it's answer not that part of my reasoning to say, to answer that question, it's not part of the argument how to prove that the purely actualized, actual actualizer is omniscient. Then it's nothing just a bald assertion and it has nothing to do with the argument. To. But let me, please hear me, please let me finish. No, because when, when, you, when yeah, you are yeah, yeah. requesting to okay. let you finish, I'm, I'm listening to you. But you are um, continuously. I think I've been more than me. fair to you. So, hi, Arvin, Arvin, just to let you know, we've been, kapatid, we've been very, very fair and letting you speak. In fact, our viewers can confirm this in the, in the comments. We have been very open to your, your words. In fact, we haven't been cutting you off. Let, I'm let that off be now clear. Because huh? I'm frustrated by let, the fact it, that you're I making it, assertions. Yeah, and and I'm a guest here. I don't want to be the asshole also, or be told that uh, we yeah, well, on the job. episode <laughs> I'm at we're, we're cutting everyone off. That that's not true, Arvin. So you please don't make well, that let, assertion. That well, no, please let me finish. We let you finish hmm, at times. Yes. Let me finish. I I have been observing. In fact, I'm the guest. Remember, like you, you are a guest also. So we pay each other respect. So you na pansing ko lang kapatid. Binibigyan ka ng oras magsalita at mag-explain at nagiging mahaba. In fact, masyadong mahaba na wala na tayo na napupuntang punto. That's why I understand Ben's frustrations. But oh, please understand our frustration also because this is supposed to be an entertaining and 
uh, fruitful exchange of ideas. So once again, Arvin, please explain to us uh, and end, yeah. end your argument in, in a in a paragraph. I have no or... idea what John just said, but I think it sounded great. So um, I just want to clarify because uh, I don't speak Tagalog. But I just want to clarify again that what happened is I said, "How do you know it's omniscient?" And you said, "Okay, it's omniscient." That's not a demonstration that it needs to know everything about the cause thing it's causing. And I and I don't see how you got there. And so if that's if you're just going to assert it and expect me to just listen to you assert it again. I don't see that we're going to get anywhere. You have the floor. Oh, so I don't even know if he was listening, but yeah, nope, he got kicked yeah, out. Got, oh. Well, oh, there he is. Arvin's back. So, All right. Uh, purely actual actualizer is omniscient. How do it's, you know it's, it's omniscient? Kind of Why does it need to be omniscient? Some kind, it's some kind of our argument because, uh, in some way or another, if the purely actualizer is the the cause of everything, because every other material substances have potentiality, then somehow uh, the effects must exist in the cause. So what does how, that have to do with we... all? Oh God! What does this have to do with omniscience? You said it's omniscient. Well, I, I'm not yet done. Can you can you let me finish? No, I can't let or... you finish because uh, you're not I, you're not answering the question. Well, I cannot summarize it in one liner, but I can prove it to okay. you that the purely actual actualizer is omniscient. Just let me finish, okay? Just be patient. Okay. More patient. I know that you're patient. Okay, so we know that in cause and effect, the effect must somehow exist in the cause in some way or another. So in, in technical term, uh, it can be divided into formally causing it or virtually causing it or eminently causing it. If I uh, give you a 20 peso bill, uh, I've just caused it formally because the 20 pesos exists in me, and then I give you 20 pesos. So you Do I need to know everything about the 20 peso cost... bill to give it to you? Yeah, because Do I, I, need to I know... must Stop. show it how... Do I need to know what the 20 peso bill is made of to give it to you? Do I need to know everything about it? That's what you're claiming. No, I need I'm to not... know everything about it. No. No, I'm classifying how a cause can produce an effect, either yeah. formally. I already understand uh, how a cause can produce an eminently. effect. Get to the omniscience. So, the next one is virtually. For example, I don't have here the twenty pesos, but I can withdraw it from ATM. So I have it virtually, and I have it eminently if I have a friend in the, for example, printing press or of money. I have the authority that a law has been passed that I can say that produce 20 pesos and I can give, I can, I do have that eminently. So how does the purely actualize, actual actualizer, how, how does the effect exist in purely actual, it's, actual actualizer? It's a matter, it's a matter of how the value is manifested, Arvin. I can, I have uh, seven tomatoes in my tomato tree right now in my garden. Uh, uh, if you sell it, I can sell it to you for, I can give it to you. How much is that? 20 pesos, diba? Mm -hmm. So you're just and, changing and, the name of it, the value. And just to be clear, I don't need to know there are seven tomatoes in the tree to know to, for there to still be seven tomatoes in the tree. So it, omniscience is not required for action or causality or whatever okay. fuzzy so, language you want to use. Well, those are the other example that Jan said are all true, but uh, can I continue? How to relate that to omniscience? I really want you to get to the omniscience because we already understand causality. We've gotten past that. I really want mm. you to get to why, okay, necessi so why it necessitates now, omniscience. We, we, we've just said earlier that every material things are composed of prime matter and substantial form, but, but matter can't exist in purely actual actualizer because it's pure potentiality. It's like but you can't hear me. substantial form is somehow... Hello? I, it's, I, like, I, it's like you can't, can't hear, hear my you, question. You it seems Arvin, like it. Bumalik, ahead, bumalik ulit tayo sa simula. Yeah, I'm telling him we went back to square one again. Uh, Arvin, continue from where we left off. Dun, dun yeah. You don't need to go back to what you said like 30 minutes ago. Let's yeah, continue. Yeah. Okay. okay, okay. I understand. So the substantial form is somehow an actual thing because it makes, for example, just fast. The body of the dog is an actual dog, not of the cat, because its substantial form is dogness. So it's an idea, it's an abstract thing. We can say that the all substantial form exists in the mind of the purely actual actualizer. 
and and to know more is to change but as i argue but you disagree the purely actual actualizer cannot change it has every knowledge and so it's it's omniscient no. so that's what so that's that's the claim that's the claim that you've made yeah, that's your argument argue, it's not it's not the argument it's your claim that it's it's the unmoved mover well, it's the beginning it's and the it knows perfect. everything that is just a bald assertion yeah but it knows that it needs assertion. to know everything i i don't see I how think... it needs to know everything and where did that knowledge even come from? Wait, we don't even know. I but. think we, esta we established that about 15 minutes ago. I think, yeah, uh, yeah we get what you're saying, Arvin. We get it. Don't think that we don't get it. We get it. But I've, how I've does that... many times. I've yeah. been doing this for how years. Does, yeah. How does that become proof? We, we must connect statement... every premises, starting from the first one. Yeah, oh, that sorry. They are changing even if I grant Without all your connecting premises... Them, even if I grant all of your premises, you don't get to omniscience. Sorry. You do not get to well, an omniscient being. Can you, if you really do understand my argument on how the purely actual actualizer You're is rejecting. Can you repeat my argument? I don't need to. Let me finish. So you... Uh, it's recorded. <laughs> you can check the replay. You can, have, you can have sufficient knowledge to cause something. You don't need all knowledge to cause something. I have sufficient knowledge about how to push a boulder off the hill. I don't need to know exactly everything about the boulder, every location of every atom everywhere on the boulder to be able to cause it to roll down the hill. So if we extrapolate that, you're violating Occam's razor because Occam's razor says, do not multiply entities unnecessarily. You are multiplying this entity with all knowledge when all it needs is sufficient knowledge. And that could be a magical space pixie who just has the knowledge just enough to cause the universe to exist. And you don't need anything more than that. It doesn't need to know all, everything about the universe in order to cause it. But uh, that will, uh, that will contradict the... Your, your argument, yes. It will, it will definitely, yes, it will. The principle of pro proportionate causality that the effect cannot be greater than the cause, that the effect is somehow existing in the cause. So as you can see, there are, there are the two effect steps can, in on. that argument going to hang on. going to omniscience. Hang on. If a magical space pixie violates the an effect cannot be greater than a cause, why doesn't a god who is by definition greater than a magical space pixie violate the same rule? You are now engaged in a special pleading fallacy. I don't see the connection. Can you complete your reasoning so I can okay. respond? So the magical space pixie has just sufficient knowledge enough to create the universe. The god uh -huh. that you're proposing has all knowledge about the universe, which is by definition greater than the magical space pixie. And your argument was that the effect cannot be greater than the cause to argue against a magical space pixie. And you're not giving that same due process to your god that is a special pleading fallacy uh, i know now how to i i do understand you it's because we need to connect the premise that the purely actualizer purely actual actualizer is changeless so if we if if the purely actual actualizer will just gain some more knowledge then it's not purely actual it has some potential to gain new knowledge but again the purely actual actualizer has no potentiality so it knows everything. Space picks. Okay, so I, I don't see how this is getting us anywhere, because yeah. I, I asked oh, I asked oh, you a specific question. I I asked you a specific question about how you can rule out a magical space pixie because it's greater than the cause, but you can't rule out a god who is by definition greater than the magical space pixie. I I don't see how you're able to justify that. So I don't see that we're going to get anywhere with this call. Well, the magical space pixie was just introduced in from thin air, and my space magical pixie has some limitation. If we can discuss its form, something like that, so it's, it can do everything the god has, can do, but it doesn't have it, omniscience. It can, it's it's uh, it, but uh, that will be a problem because it needs some cause. If it if it has some limitation, because we can ask no. where does the limitation of the the um, magical space pixie coming from. Yeah, sorry. I thanks for calling. Okay, thank you very much. Anything else, John? Yeah, no. I just went through the comments. Um, congratulations, Ben. We're very, very patient. <laughs> oh, good. 
All right. Thank yeah. you, Arvin, for calling. Uh, I appreciate thank it. Thank you very much for your patience. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, maybe Arvin. We can, maybe we can continue this yeah. next time if you maybe try to restructure. And, and ask yourself, yeah. how do you rule out an omniscient or non-omniscient space pixie but rule in a god who is omniscient? They both are identical in terms of what they can or cannot do. I, I, that's my assertion. I'm asserting it. That the space pixie is exactly the same as the god, except we call it a space pixie, and it doesn't have omniscience. Think about that, and then get back to us. Okay. Yeah, you can always call, man. Don't worry. Our doors are open. Yeah. Wala namang kaming... oh. I just want to try to move Wala on. Namang... Well, uh, I think I, uh, I'm not a good uh, caller, <laughs> because I think no, you were I fine. somehow... Uh, I, mean, yeah, I got a little bit of patience, but it wasn't, very uh, much for it wasn't your... personal. Yeah. Yes, yes. A, I, I think I must, uh, I must try to explain some things briefly. So next time, <laughs> I okay. hope I can. All right, bye-bye. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Stay safe. Yeah, watch the call back yes, later sir. and try to think about it. All right, bye-bye. Thank you, Arvin. Uh, All right. <laughs> I feel bad because right, I'm getting cool. really impatient, but I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to do in that situation where I'm trying to explain clearly that this doesn't necessarily mm. follow, and I'm asking a very direct question. And like, I don't want to beat up on Arvin or anything, but I mean, it's really frustrating to sit here and explain over and over again, this is my question, this is my question, to keep going back to the very beginning and yeah. not answering the question. That, but, that's one thing I, yeah. I realized from podcasting in the past, is when you start getting into the textbook definitions and stuff like that, you, you're going to alienate your audience as well, when the purpose of this is the friendly discourse. We can actually discuss that in a special episode. I think that would be, that would be better, because it's more targeted. There'll be more focus and preparation for it, rather than just yeah going in circles i mean that's the thing is but like I, 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 I feel like a lot of the audience's eyes were just glazing over from listening to the argument because it, it's <laughs> even if i granted that the argument is necessarily valid it doesn't demonstrate that it's sound it's just we mm. we would just agree yeah there must be some purely actualized actualizer how do we demonstrate that how do we prove we're right it's just an assertion yeah you know um yeah and um i'm seeing posts already from well comments from people so they, they even have replies for Arvin. So, Arvin, uh, you're very welcome to jump in the comment section and yeah, you, you can just there. That would be cool. It's engagement, man. And as far as uh, the like but, technical jargon, I, I try to, like, when I say things in the quote unquote technical terms, I guess, like bringing up fallacies and stuff, I, mm -hmm. I do try to explain it like with a clear example. Like, I don't want to just say this is a fallacy and just leave it at that. You know, I want to demonstrate yeah, exactly. the, the analogy that demonstrates it's a fallacy. Um, yeah, and, and it's so fair. I, it's fair to do that. And I try not to be too technical with my words, but I, I sometimes I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like, uh, I mean, what, what do you think of all these arguments for the existence of God? Do you think that they're actually, uh, do you agree that they can't really get anywhere? Or what do you think? I mean, if there's one well, that's Well, I, I, like I like the fact that they put some thought into it. And there is, there is some research to, but then they keep mentioning also studies from this person, studies from that person. There's yeah. not... That that element of well, what what I think in atheism, it's kind of like the self reflect, the self thinking, the way you can actualize why you're this way, why you behave this way. It's it um, in Tagalog backup. Like if you're gonna go to a fight, you don't go there alone. You have right. backup, and their backups are our textbooks. Yeah, and it is a little bit unfair to oh. the callers in a sense that we have. Uh, I kind of lose lost you here a little bit, but it, it kind of is. Almost a little bit unfair that it's like two against one and against the callers, but I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. We we try to be fair to them. So. Yeah, uh, but I mean, on on their end, on their end, they're using um, stuff that you can find in text and other videos or other other theists who are defending the reason of you know they they bring this ammunition with them. I'm literally that's why I just have cigarettes. That's it. I checked my phone once today, so everything you're hearing from me is from me. I'm not using jargon to to get away with murder. Yeah, okay. same here. It's all coming out I'm of my own head. not trying to win the argument. Yeah. The, uh, the only sense in, in which it's not is when I maybe write down an argument that someone's making. Like, I was kind of jotting down mm. notes as Arvin was talking so I wouldn't forget points I wanted to address. But, um, mm. like, I'm not... I didn't research anything. I didn't look up fallacies. This is just my own head. You know, I, I don't have a dictionary in front of me. I mean, I, I do. I could look it up, but... Um, and, and that's not really relevant anyway. Even if I did look it up, it doesn't make what I said right or wrong. It just means 
you know yeah i'm i'm being too technical and perhaps that's a fault of my own practice yeah. with these arguments but um but anyway like i i enjoy the arguments but even if they were demonstrated Ooh. to be validly structured which none of them are but even if they were the conclusions don't follow because you have to demonstrate yeah. the truth of the premises so you know unless we can step outside of the argument and say oh we can point to this piece of evidence to demonstrate it it, it is just navel gazing um which it's for those of you who don't know what that means it just means like uh the the sort of childlike staring at your belly button <laughs> navel gazing it's your navel so um you know ooh, look um, how cool so my excited. belly button is i'm not making fun of arvin i'm just saying like that's kind of what the arguments become when you're breaking it down to like uh if we can't demonstrate it it is just quote unquote navel gazing that's what i mean sorry i'm not trying to insult anyone all right i'm pretty excited that's okay. caller <laughs> uh i don't know that we have another caller um so maybe we can go on to a, perhaps a topic or continue the discussion but uh if there is anybody mm. who wants to call or are there any comments in the chat we should maybe respond to i think uh Kuti, Kuting? sorry i'm really bad at pronouncing these names maybe you can help me out with that k-u-t-i-n-g Kuting. that means Thank cat you. I was pretty close then. Good okay. Oh, kitten. Kitten. Oh. Kitten. Yeah. Good thing. She asked earlier in the chat, and I wrote it down. Let me see if I can find. Uh, she said something about. Um, oh, where was it? I, I don't have it written down anymore. I must have erased it. She wrote. Uh, she said. Um, it was. It was about uh, the atheist, like something about the occult. Maybe, Kuching, you're still in the chat, so maybe you can um, clarify what you meant. She said, she said okay, something about the occult. What do atheists think about the occult? And my answer will be, I don't know. It depends on what you mean by occult. But um, uh, as if if my understanding of the occult is correct, it's sort of like witchcraft or something like that. Is that a correct understanding? Uh, I could be wrong I'm about that. I'm trying to look for a comment. Well, <clears throat> the occult, like, you mean like pagan, pagan beliefs, like the occult that way? I, I think that's what it means. I... Uh, well, I mean, I guess I could look up the definition, even though I said I don't want to do that. But occult is supernatural, mystical, or magical beliefs, practices, or phenomena. So, uh, yeah, essentially witchcraft. Oh, I guess you okay. could say it would be an yeah. interchangeable term. Or it's like a, it's like astrology, essential oils, salt lamps. Any of those, yeah. You know, that, that's yeah. Anything that makes the claim, anything like um, what you call this, uh, people that read your fortune and stuff like that. Right. Uh, so before I let you answer, very, very, very skeptical. So before I let you answer on what do atheists think about the occult, because I think that's mm. a destructive question because atheism doesn't make any claims about occult. It just addresses the God claim. So uh, what do individual atheists think about the occult is a valid question, but not uh, atheism on the whole has nothing to say on the occult. So anyway, John, yeah. what do you think about the occult? <laughs> Well, okay, so there, there, there are certain practices that every cult or occult has some good points, okay? Like there are the tenets of uh, the Church of Satanism and all that, that they do make some valid points. But then you can also say you can take some good stuff from the Muslim writings. You can take some from Buddhism. You can always nitpick and cherry pick nice stuff. In fact, that's what I've noticed a lot in the Philippines, that it's a lot of nitpicking. Uh, people and to talk about the good stuff, not the bad stuff. Like a good example of the occult, I guess, in relation to supernatural powers and stuff like that. You know how like the feng shui expert that trended on social media, he said 2020 is going to be a great year. It's going to be super yeah, duper prosperous. The best. <laughs> and look where we are now. Yeah. So I, I think guess some, a, some atheists. It's a great year for viruses. <laughs> I guess it depends on who you ask on who's a great year or not. Hmm. I've met some atheists who who do believe in the Mercury retrograde stuff, which is strange. They, yeah, yeah, I do know a few of those. They're, that's why. That's the thing. We don't. It's not about God anymore. It's about believing like in black cats or walking under a staircase. Anything super superstitious. See, yeah. Uh, I personally am not superstitious. In fact, I like to disprove the superstitious. But at the same time, that's why I love UFO videos. I love uh, those like ghost hunting stuff you know it's entertaining yeah. it's yeah, they fun are fun i agree i actually I, enjoy, well I'm i don't waiting. enjoy ghost hunters i'm shows, waiting I, I i do like I'm the horror movies and that. fiction so. 
Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, but those types of, uh, I, I consider them forms of entertainment, even hypnotism, that they say it's supernatural powers and stuff mm. like that. But when you look back, it's like magic. It's like magic. Like, um, I, I'm sure you know of I'm Amazing Randy. Why? I do. Why? I'm going to fight you on that because I, while I would agree that an individual can be entertained by it and you can enjoy it as entertainment, I think on the mm -hmm. whole it's dangerous because there's a yes. stark contrast between a magician who admittedly says this is just entertainment and a person who is taking someone else's money because they're going to predict the future who claims to actually I have completely superman agree. Power. So I do agree it can That's be entertaining. What... <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I brought up the Amazing Randy like yeah. the amazing Randy, um, I've met a couple of atheists that don't know who he is, but he has that one million dollar challenge to anyone with supernatural abilities to prove their powers. They'll win the cash under uh, conditions, yeah. under test conditions. I don't think that's so available that's what, anymore. He's a magician. But it, it was available for really? many, many years. Yeah, it was available for years, but oh. I think they took it off the table because they just got tired of doing it. So, um, oh, they did. Uh, they did it yeah. once. I think they cut it off with the... He's a tech magician. Jeez, right. uh, I forgot his name, but he has a weird hairdo. So what they did was... <laughs> um, he, was able, he was able to prove to Randy his supernatural powers. Everyone applauded. When Randy handed oh, him yeah, the check... Oh, yeah, I remember what you're talking he about. Ripped, yeah. He ripped the check because they were all in cahoots. Yeah. But it was it a was great all, show. It, it was, was all a farce. And the whole purpose of it was to demonstrate that just because they can't prove it wrong doesn't mean that mm. it is correct. And that was what they were getting at, is that just because we can't prove how something isn't done doesn't mean you have actually proven that it's true. So I, it was yeah. a very good exercise in skepticism and understanding skepticism. So I would, I would basically yeah, would be might, like... Um, that might have been the point. James mm. Randi's inability Sorry, to demonstrate that this particular trick is false doesn't demonstrate that this particular trick is true. And that's the, the point they were mm. getting at with that. But, I mean, you know, it was also entertainment. But um, the other aspect of this i don't know have you seen darren brown oh you yeah dude Hell i yeah. love darren brown if you guys haven't yeah. seen darren brown d-e-r-e-r-d-e-r-r-e-n b-r-l-w-n -E 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 darren brown he has a lot of different uh, shows on youtube you can watch that are i really think it's great. on netflix it, i think there are some yeah on the one on, as well. the, the one on youtube that you should check out is when he becomes a, a preacher a faith healer yeah that one's really good that, that's i like good the astrology episode. one because, as well hmm his commentary on that is entertaining. It's learn from because you know he's applying everything he's learning from his atheism. And and for me and that yeah. is valid entertainment in what you say because he is while he is espousing supernatural powers in a sense that he's like pretending to. Um, mm. He's not. He will go through and explain not in detail how he did the trick, but that it is a trick and here's the essence of what I'm doing. He, he will yep. even go he will even go so far as to say everything you're seeing is fake i'm not doing anything real this is all for pretend and he'll just say that the entire mm. time while he's doing it uh and just blowing yeah. people away it's insane <laughs> and mm. uh i i'm sure i'm convinced that he uses some stooges to get his uh his magic across I, as someone who studied mm. magic uh for many years that but i have no objection to that i think it still provides a very good entertainment value mm. So, yeah, he has it, a, yeah. a guest thing in Joe Rogan's <laughs> podcast, which is actually um, quite informative because he also kind of teaches how he does it. Okay. It's pretty interesting. It's interesting how he does it. And it's all really psychological. Okay. The guy is good. The guy is good. The guy is fast. He's really good. Yeah. He's really good and he's really on top of it. I mean, I, I've never seen anybody with quite that kind of skill before. And uh, I, even though I love Penn and Teller, there's something special about Darren Brown. Um. So I, we have another caller on the line that we can pull in. So I want to mm -hmm. see. Uh, I think they're screening him right now. We can just pull him in anyway. Uh, hey, Joshua, you're on with John and Ben. Uh, where are you from? Joshua? He Hello? said he was on the call waiting. So I, that's, what the, uh, that's what the admins told me. They said he's uh, waiting. Yeah. Hold. Joshua, while you figure out your microphone situation, we're going to continue talking. So <laughs> go ahead. Um. Yeah, sorry. So uh, I was going through the the questions again. So okay. yeah, the whole occult thing. Um, here we go. Uh, where was that? Where was the question? Uh, religion. Looking at the Bible. Uh, this is from Jonathan Develo. 
Religion looking at the Bible as a historical book. What's your take on this? Is it a historical book? I don't know. I think it's... Oh, are you asking me? I'm sorry. I, I yeah, yeah. You were well, that's, that's just... the question, I guess, for us. I thought you were asking the question they were asking out loud. Okay. Oh. So uh, is it a historical book? Uh, in a sense, yes, uh, because mm -hmm. it does reference things in history that did happen, yeah. but in a much more real sense, no, because it makes claims like uh, uh, Jesus actually existing and walking around and being one specific person, when it actually it may have been mm -hmm. multiple people that got kind of sort of glommed together. Um, mm -hmm. th at, the, at the time, it was not unusual for there to be thousands, possibly hundreds, um, one way or the other, of uh, itinerant Jewish rabbis. It was very common. And uh, there may have been even a bunch of them named Yeshua, even. So it's really hard to say um, that this one particular Yeshua is entirely the story that's being depicted. And then there's also factual errors. Like, uh, there's no mm. evidence that Jews were ever enslaved in Egypt uh, for the Pharaoh. Uh, it doesn't even reference which Pharaoh it is. Uh, <laughs> it just says Pharaoh. And the Pharaohs had names. There wasn't one Pharaoh. And then there's also... Um, the Noah's Flood, there's no geological evidence of mm -hmm. a Noah's Flood, and there's other, I think, dozens of flood stories and flood myths and other religions and cultures that are very, very similar, and so it reads more like a mythic story uh, than an actual yes. historical document. Because there are other texts from other sides of the world, which happen approximately yeah. the same time, who they don't intersect it. That's also the thing. And it's, uh, I, I interesting, it's uh, unreliable. <laughs> Interesting how the Chinese civilization wasn't affected by Noah's flood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they seem to go completely unnoticed. So, yeah, I mean, go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt, but I just wanted to make that little point. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, Kuting says, uh, Kuting says it's like a bunch of journals and letters that may or, or may not have been entirely fictional. Um, there is also the, the position that says that it's stolen stories or adapted stories to fit the people at the time. Because if you do want, you know, to create that storybook or that historical book, you have to take snippets and in where some instances were recorded in other parts of the world or the Middle East or wherever you want to take it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do think it's a bunch of journals. It, yeah, it's a compilation. It's like those books that you find in convenience stores with many well, I mean, like a yeah, and, and I think the Moses story reads more like a mythic hero than an actual, um, you know, story about a historical figure. I don't think Moses probably ever actually existed. Uh, or if he did, it, the stories are way overblown. Um, this, this whole idea. And then, and then Noah living for, like, what was it, 900 years? Um, <laughs> it, that's, or what was, I don't know how long it was. It was a really long time. <laughs> Uh, maybe it was 200. Either way, it's, it's an absurdly long time that just doesn't make any sense with biology that we understand about human beings. And um, uh, there's, there's so many issues with it. And of course, Adam and Eve never probably existed. According to evolution, we evolved from separate groups that diverged into different populations. And that's population mm -hmm. mechanics, not two individuals. So, that, you know, it's, def it's definitely not a historical text. There we go. I think Joshua's ready. Yeah, I Joshua have him in. The, I have him in. Josh, Joshua, are you there? Hello? I'm waiting for him to start speaking. It says Joshua has an audio issue. He just said something about the Pontus group. This is coming from the admin. I don't know what uh, what exactly is going on, but maybe if you, if Richard, uh, uh, or sorry, uh, Mino, Minoru, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. If you guys can figure out what's going on with Joshua, that'd be great. Because uh, I don't want to waste time on the show talking about that. So, um, uh, there's, oh, here's an Abraham, nice... in, there's an invite from Abraham for a debate, apparently. He's not actually in the call, but he's, he's inviting us for a debate. I don't know what for, but okay. Tell him I said okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we have a, a tidbit from Angelo. Uh, he said the Randy challenge was actually terminated in 2015. Yes, I'm not mistaken. It was. Okay. Yes, it was. My um, age is showing. Sorry, guys. There are there are other organizations besides James Randy that will do something similar, and I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure if you could demonstrate supernatural powers, you could just go out and try to get a Nobel Prize and scientific grants, because that would definitely mm -hmm. uh, be accepted by scientists if it could be shown to be true. 
So yeah. you don't need the James Randi Foundation to do it. Um, you can just write up a paper, explain what it is, how you do it, repeatable, testable, falsifiable, etc. Um, so yeah. <laughs> oh, Go out and We're get a Nobel for Prize. Joshua. <laughs> He's still in the chat. I don't know what's going on with Joshua, but uh, yeah. Hang on, I'm gonna shift my body around. There we go. Okay. Um, okay I'm going through the the comments. Uh, let's see. Oh, Yami likes my comment of essential oils. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> some of some of those can be dubious claims. Like um, it's like kind of like Alex yeah. Jones. You know, like in Infowars, he's got. Oh. That. Is that Joshua? Oh, Joshua, think... are you here? Is that Joshua? Yes. Yeah, if you yeah, can, can turn off him. the stream and uh, yeah, just focus yeah, on the, the phone, and, and maybe if you can put on some headphones. And, uh, just focus on the phone, and, and maybe if you can. All right. What's the topic? Yeah. It's making the topic an echo. is whatever you want it to be. Yeah, whatever you want to ask. Ah, okay. So I will. Uh, um, I wanted to call it ethics. I, I, I already posted. On Facebook, but the one um, yeah, uh, Joshua, you're cutting out a uh, lot. Joshua, I'm... you're cutting out a I'm trying to find a signal here. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I want to talk about of uh, and health environment. If I heard you correctly, you said you want to talk about hell. I heard you correctly, you said you want to talk about hell. I uh, know eth uh, ethics. You uh, about yeah. I'm I'm just not getting it. Maybe you can yeah. type your question in the comments because I have no idea what you're asking. I, I apologize. We're gonna go ahead and uh, mute you. Hello. So, <laughs> it's choppy. So Joshua, go ahead yeah, and ask your question in the uh, Facebook chat, and we'll try to uh, answer it as best we can. And then if you want to respond, you can. And then this will be the last few minutes of the show. We can keep going, John, if you want, but I don't want to keep you longer than we need to. So, um, you know, yeah, it's up to you. It's been fun, man. It's been fun. I'm, I'm enjoying. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning a lot of stuff. And I'm learning too. It's fun. Yeah. I like this. So. Um, I think it's a good thing. For, what you guys are doing for the community is a real, really good thing, man. I'm very happy that this is actually happening. I wish I could take all the credit, but in, I owe it to everybody else too. So, um, Joshua, ethics oh, here as applied to health and environment. Okay. Hmm. Um, I think he's referencing a conversation we were having um, on the hot toss page i think that's what he's getting at there's there's seems to have we we had a conversation where he brought up let me see if i can just pull it up so i can reference it directly and not from memory because my memory is not what it used to be <laughs> so we had a conversation uh he asked so uh, you know something about uh ethics or without you know gods or something like that i'm trying to get the specific quote uh, oh where do we find where do atheists find their ethics kind of it wasn't quite like that it was more of just a general like uh question about uh, secular humanism or, or secular moralities but uh at one point in the conversation i think he asked me um how do you get from how, how do you make a distinction between something that affects the environment and something that affects our well-being or, or something like that I, i'm not sure exactly what it was so joshua if you want to ask your question a little more clearer uh, in the chat maybe we can answer because that wasn't really a question so um mm, yeah. it was more of a statement but if you have a specific question i can answer it but i can also pull up the conversation we had so feel free joshua we're waiting on you and well i mean not waiting but um last few minutes of the show we'll go ahead and answer your question um so essentially, that's right. the conversation broke down to we were having a discussion mm. about secular humanism. Like he he asked about ethics, and I said, "Well, I rely on secular humanism," and then I demonstrated okay. what secular humanism is. Secular humanism is the the foundation of it is well being. It's the uh, how do I convince someone of that? Well, I convince them that well being is in their best interest, 
by definition, mm-hmm. because uh, it, it has to do with uh, favoring health over sickness, favoring pleasure over pain, favoring life over death. And while those are general, they don't apply in all circumstances, and they can sometimes come in conflict. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was my basic argument, is that the goal is to increase well-being. And in order to do that, we need some way to assess the world around us. We are physical beings in a physical universe governed by physical laws. And the physical mm-hmm. facts about the universe dictate what is and isn't in our best interest or well-being. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it did. I actually agree with it. I don't have anything to add to it because I was like, okay. <laughs> that's basically how, how we live our lives. It's, you know, doing what's good for us and at the same time not bumping other people along the way. Uh, now, if it comes to the environment, now that's when it becomes difficult because you're not deciding as a human being. You're deciding as a society, as an economy. It's something completely different. And that economy is driven by a handful of people or a bunch of people or corporations who are made of people. So that's why it all falls down down that line when the dominoes fall to the last one. That's just you. And it's not selfish to think of yourself, your well-being, your health, your mental health. And, you know, some people say yeah. um, and exercise is good for you. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it is. Well, what I, like, what I like to say is that even from a completely selfish point of view, the selfish thing for me to do is to create a society that benefits me. So the societal well-being benefits me more than just being selfish on my own in terms of like, God, ah, this is all for me, you know. Uh, so it benefits mm-hmm. me the most to have a society that directly benefits me. Yeah. Because um, it makes it easier. It lessens the conflicts that you have to deal with. When you mentioned earlier the word conflict, well, that's the spice of life. If you're not in conflict with anything, you're not living. That's yeah. the thing. You, it's, it's a matter of how you deal with the conflict. You can either choose one direction or you can choose another. And I, and I think that, it, um, I think it's slightly more objective than that. It's a lot like a chess game where the rules of chess are ultimately arbitrary, but we can assess with respect to the goal of winning or not losing the game of chess, which moves are better than mm. others. Now, there, might not, there may not always be a clear answer, and sometimes the one answer may be sort of roughly equivalent to another, but that doesn't mean that we just throw our hands in the air and give up. It means that we choose one of them, perhaps at random, flip of a coin, where we just sort of, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's sort of like the trolley problem, which we discussed a little bit before. Uh, that was sort of, uh, do, I, do I let the train go and kill my mom, or do I change it to the other track to kill these three workers I don't know? Well, there's really mm-hmm. not a really good answer to that question. <laughs> and so yeah. any answer is just as good as any other to me, because I, I don't see, I wouldn't necessarily call someone immoral for switching the track, and I wouldn't call them immoral for letting their mother die so it's Mm -hmm. it's not a clear answer but uh we have uh, another caller do you want to go ahead and take it or do you think we're going in the show here what do you think it's up to you yeah let's do it man let's do it all right we got another call everyone wants (laughs) i think everyone wants to hear another caller (laughs) we gotta like cleanse our palate um i'm not sure who it is but justin you said we have another caller lined up i'm guessing it's this person here i'm gonna go and drag him in uh I think your name is Santiago. Are you here with us? Your mic is muted, so I don't know if you're actually here or not. But uh, if not, we're going to move on and call it a night. But if you're here, we'll go ahead and answer your question. Yeah, I'm just looking at the little window with the muted mic. Yep. Click it. <laughs> Click it. Click the mic. You can Click. do it. We believe in you. <laughs> and don't be shy. We speak, well, I speak Tagalog. So if you're, if you're shy to speak in English or ask your question in English, I'd be very, very happy to translate. Yeah. And yeah, that would be fine, too. So, so yeah, we um, still have Santiago on hold. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, if that's the case, uh, Justin, mm-hmm. uh, is Santiago going to come back? Or do you know what's going on? Do we have another caller? Is it not Santiago? Or is there somebody else? Because uh, if so, we're at the two-hour mark. And uh, I think we're both a little exhausted now. <laughs> yeah, but it was fun, man. I enjoyed this. That's why it's, it's, oh. it's a good feeling. And I didn't even realize that two hours had already passed. So that's a good thing. Yeah. That's when you know, that's it when goes you know quick. conversation is going well. Arfel says, uh, guys, I'm a, a Santiago. My mic is busted. Or I don't, well, I can't take your call. 
Oh, oh who do we, we have? No, who's this? Yeah, uh, oh, gosh. I think the other caller got disconnected. Um, well, His name is Archiquito, and we're waiting for him, but I think it's already gone. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, in that case, um, I guess we'll end the show for now. And if he wants to call back next week, he yep. is more than welcome to. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I Perfect. really want to thank John for coming on the show today. I hope maybe we can have you next week or the week after. I don't know who we're going to have on a co-host next week, but it was really great having you here. Mm -hmm. And uh, any, any last words? Thanks for having me. <laughs> any last words? Um, any yeah. last comments? Uh, check out. Oh, there. <laughs> it's another comment. Uh, you can check my podcast. Uh, it's already on 76 episodes. It's called Mad Cat Midnight. Uh, we're still fixing the kinks because now we're doing Discord style. We're doing it on the live broadcast instead of on radio. So that particular show, it's all kalokohan with musicians, artists, uh, and people from basically small, medium industry. So yeah, uh, there's a lot of... Um, really quick. Profan, so... <laughs> Yeah. How do we get to Mad Cat? Check what was out. it? One more time. What's the link or something? Mad like Cat, Mad Cat Midnight on Facebook, and you can find the episodes on Mixcloud. So we're going to be broadcasting ah, at midnight, okay. actually later. Yeah. I will. So you can check that I'll out. I'll try to get a link in the chat for the people here. Is it Facebook.com/slash Mad Cat Midnight? Yep, that's it. Okay. And then uh, for Devil Devil, if you guys like devil and humor and <laughs> horror music, uh, check out Mr. Bones at the Boneyard Circus. We're going to be, I think, in the Manila Bulletin or Manila Standard tomorrow. So, yeah, we got a bunch of live videos. We're raising funds for roadies. Um, I'm going to speak Tagalog for a while. Sa mga hindi nakakaalam, ang pinaka-apektado sa lahat sa, sa larangan ng musika ay ang mga roadies. Because these are the people who have families to feed. And now that we have the coronavirus epidemic, None of them can work, so we're really, really trying to raise funds to go to the videos. We've made a couple of quarantine videos, and then all the links for donations are there. So yeah, help help a bunch of roadies because they make us look good when we perform. And if you're an aspiring musician, never forget, just like in the bar, tip your bartender. You should be tipping your roadies and taking care of them. So yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and I, I really hope we get to uh, see you again next week or... Uh... If we have another host on, we'll have you on the week after if you're up for it. But uh, thanks so yeah, much, man. Yeah, I'm game for it. It's mm -hmm. been fabulous. I want awesome. to see more about this debate with Abraham. But thanks so much, everybody. We're going to go ahead and end the stream here. Um, uh, thank you so much again, John. And uh, take care. And I appreciate all you all coming, all 20-some-odd of you that came in here at any given time. All your questions were wonderful. We really appreciate it. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.